So my original plan when I was going to do this video was to actually write down in detail what the USDA diet actually recommends. And then I realized that's going to confuse a lot of people. So what I want to do is I want to just talk about the larger concept of the USDA diet and why the USDA diet is not making Americans morbidly obese, okay? What is making Americans morbidly obese is what's called the standard American diet, also the SAD diet for short, which is the habits of eating that have developed in the United States and unfortunately throughout the world involving fast food and convenience foods and hyper-refined carbohydrates. And I'm saying hyper-refined carbohydrates for a reason, and it also has to do with refined fats like trans fats and things like that. I should say fundamentally altered fats. But the thing is, the USDA diet is a healthy diet based on traditional eating patterns that have been, well, really, it's not based on traditional eating patterns, but the same science that went into determining how people should eat has uh, basically fumbled upon the same concepts as, say, the Mediterranean diet and things of that nature, these other traditional diets. And it's a whole grain based eating approach where you eat most of your meals or, you know, most of your diet is based around whole grains and you have, uh, you know, a significant amount of vegetables and fruits and dairy, uh, like it goes up the pyramid, dairy and eggs, eggs in moderation, some meat, okay, but not, a, not an overabundance of meat and you use fats and oils sparingly, some fish, of course. Uh, and this is how you're told to eat on the USDA diet. There's nothing at all wrong with this diet, except for the fact that consumerist forces, and which unfortunately are involved in science, and this is the thing, things like the USDA diet, which act as a consumer protections type of thing, should not allow uh, corporate interests to uh, worm their way into such things, and that's exactly what happened. So... Unfortunately, what the USDA diet should be saying is 100% of grains should be whole grains, okay? When people see 15 servings of grain, what they don't understand is that's not, um, that's not like, like when I eat a cup of oatmeal, that's over two servings of oatmeal. Like I'll take a cup of dried oatmeal and mix that with two cups of water and that's my breakfast, okay? That's like almost three servings of oatmeal. Okay, so that's that, what, what people aren't understanding is what they're considering servings are, uh, it's distorted from what a normal person would eat. It's, uh, it's not as much food matter, it's not as much matter as you might think it is. Uh, I do have some issues with the USDA diet. For example, it does not favor any focus on phytonutrients. Okay, such as things like cocoa and spices and things of that nature, uh, which are necessary and, and are dealt with in other diets like the Atkins diet, especially the Atkins age defying diet and the Mediterranean diet and the Nutritarian diet and things of this nature. Uh, and I think more, more focus has to be put on that, but actually the macronutrient balance of a true USDA diet is actually not bad as long as you're focusing on whole foods, especially whole plant foods, okay? Remember, you can follow a USDA diet and be completely vegan. Of course, you would have to add B vitamins to your diet, particularly B12, uh, which is not hard. Some things are fortified with B12. Another thing that I want to point out is a lot of people think refined foods are killing you. Refined foods are killing you. No, <laughs> it depends on what kind of refined food it is. For example, tofu is a refined food. Tofu does not happen to appear in nature. You can't pick tofu from a tree. It is a refined food. It's also very healthy for you as long as you're not allergic to soy. It even has tumor suppressant capabilities due to the phytoestrogens in it. It has things that help mediate estrogen, or it helps, it helps mediate menopause and the menopause symptoms. It helps a lot of things. It helps to reduce the risk of prostate and breast cancer. Okay, so these are some of the benefits of a refined food called tofu. Okay, olive oil is a healthful oil. Canola oil is a healthful oil. These are refined foods. They're not killing you. They're not killing you. 
What is killing people is things like sugary drinks, even juices like orange juice, too much orange juice, too much apple juice, too much grape juice, too much soda. And that's another thing is the idea, oh, diet soda is going to kill you. Diet soda is going to... Diet soda is not going to kill most people unless they have a very rare genetic disease that doesn't allow them to metabolize certain amino acids. And I've been through this. There's a warning on every bottle of diet soda warning these people to stay away from it. But these same people need to avoid these proteins in milk, dairy, cheese. Well, cheese has dairy. But milk, eggs, you know, pork, beef, chicken, fish, etc. These proteins exist in other places besides NutraSweet. And it's not the NutraSweet that's killing you. Uh, some people will say things like, for example, uh, I was talking to a friend the other day about uh, sugar-free candy. And the truth is, you know, the, the only problem with sugar-free candy is a lot of sugar-free candy uses uh, sugar alcohol, which can result in a laxative effect. But that's not dangerous, and it only occurs if you're overdoing the sugar-free candy. Um, but it's much healthier to have uh, sugar-free candy, like sugar-free chocolate, sugar-free gummy bears, sugar-free what have you, than it is sugared candy. Okay, now one of my problems is it's difficult. I just don't eat any candy. Um, but it's difficult to find like sugar-free uh, sugar and vegan products. It's, it's usually quite difficult to find those. Because uh, a lot of vegans are like, I'm organic, I only eat organic natural foods, I'm not going to put anything in my body that's not natural, okay? Uh, so that's that's the problem you have, is it's very hard to find sugar-free vegan products, usually, unless it's like sugar-free diet soda or something like that. But sugar-free candy is, is difficult to find, because it's usually like sugar-free milk chocolate, or something of that nature. So it's hard to find sugar-free candy, if you're a vegan. So I just don't eat, I, do, I just don't eat candy. I do have like 90% dark chocolate sometimes and things like that, which is vegan. Or at least it's technically vegan, although it may have some like milk residue in it or something like that. So that's, that's my deal with that. So I do find that one of the problems with the USDA diet is it's not focused on telling people to eat 100% correct. That's the problem. And that's to help allow for, like for example, fruit juice is not a substitute for fruit. Uh, now what I want to talk about is my eating patterns. When I was the healthiest I was, and it didn't matter if I was omnivore, pescatarian, lacto-ovo-vegetarian, ovo-vegetarian, or vegan. I followed the basic same dietary principles. Protein and a lot of vegetables and some fruit in the form of low sugar fruit like berries. Okay. And I did that for many, 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 many years. And I thrived on that diet, regardless of whether I was an omnivore, a pescatarian, a lacto-ovo-vegetarian, or an ovo because I cut dairy out first, or an ovo-vegetarian, okay, or a vegan. Now, I've been vegan now for about 11 years, even maybe even a little more than 11 years, okay? So I've been vegan for quite some time now, 100% plant-based, okay? I don't eat animal products. But the thing is, I thrived on this, this high-protein, lower-carbohydrate diet. And this is the thing I found out. Now, a lot of people don't know this about the Atkins diet. After you graduate the Atkins diet, it's basically just a whole food diet. Now, what I did when I was following this Atkins approach to health, what I discovered, and I'm not saying this is Atkins because it's not, but what I did eventually discover is it's absolutely unnecessary, or at least for me it was unnecessary, to count carbohydrates if the only place I was getting carbohydrates was from vegetables. What kind of vegetables? Well, predominantly cruciferous vegetables. I ate a lot of broccoli, a lot of Brussels sprouts, a lot of cabbage, and I would have sea vegetables at least three times a week, like uh, uh, wakame, uh, nori, uh, just plain kelp. Okay, I would have sea vegetables two or three times a week. Now I have sea vegetables more frequently. I eat roasted uh, nori sheets every day. Try to get like two packs of the roasted nori snacks uh, or lavar or whatever they're calling it these days. So I, I eat that about every day now. But my point is now I do eat whole grains. I do focus a lot on beans because I know more about uh, proper vegan nutrition now and things like that, which I already knew. But now I do have to watch my total calorie intake and my total carbohydrate intake. 
a lot more than I did when I was following my protein and vegetable diet. Uh, and that's another one of my other issues with the USDA diet is they should focus on calling things carbohydrates as opposed to things like uh, vegetables or fruit or whole grains. Um, I do think that fruit is something that should be looked at as a potentially dangerous food in excess uh, simply because of the fructose and there needs to be more knowledge uh, gained on the dangers of high fruit diets uh, and how it how they may or may not affect the liver. I, in my opinion, that's what needs to happen. And I want you to know I'm not a doctor, I'm not a chiropractor, I'm not a nurse, I'm not any of these things, but I'm saying that fructose does seem to ag aggravate uh, problems with the liver. Uh, doesn't mean that you can't have any fruit, but if you're having fruit, it obviously should be coming from fruit that's extremely high in phytonutrients, like berries, cherries, uh, tomatoes, high in phytonutrients, low in total fructose. Uh, tomatoes, uh, peppers, red pe like bell peppers, that type of thing. These are the kind of fruits people should be eating. Another thing that the USDA diet doesn't recommend that I think it should is water intake. Okay? Now, for me, I get about one ounce per pound of body weight in water. Now, I exercise a lot, although right now I'm not because my stomach is still healing. I don't know what the hell I did with that weightlifting. It's not a hernia, luckily, because it keeps getting better and then I cough or something and screw it up. But essentially, uh, I think they should be more careful about recommending water intake. And what I do like about the USDA diet is it does not restrict sodium. It just says get under five grams of sodium a day which is doable, okay? That's not, uh, I had problems restricting sodium because I was listening to people like Dr. Greger uh, from nutritionfacts.org about how dangerous sodium is. Well, you need sodium to regulate your heart rhythm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people might not, might not need to restrict sodium, but I, I like to use a sodium potassium blend, a potassium iodide sodium blend. It's potassium chloride, potassium iodide, and, um, sodium okay and I, I like to shake that on it's Morton Morton's makes it and it helps me get a little bit more potassium in my diet and it helps me get a little more potassium iodide in my in my uh, diet now obviously if you're eating a ton of sea vegetables you might not want to overdo the the iodine from other sources because it, it can you can overdo the iodine but I don't really think I'm overdoing it I'm not having like hyperthyroidism or anything like that but my point is my point is, is that um, restricting sodium, which is popular amongst like the, the, uh, the DASH diet and things like that, might not be what's good for everybody. That's what I was doing at the get-go. And my heart rhythm was a lot more wacky when I was restricting sodium, when I was getting about 1,500, 2,000 milligrams a day. Now I'm getting about 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams a day. I'm doing much better with my energy levels, lack of dizziness, better heart rhythms, things of that nature. Uh, so that's, that's one thing I want to point out is that's one benefit is the USDA diet is similar to the World Health Organization diet in the sense that they're telling you to get under five grams a day, World Health Organization under six grams a day. But they're not telling you to get under 2,000 milligrams a day or under two grams a day. So that's, that's good too. Uh, but I do think that there's a lot of room for improvement for the USDA diet. I do not believe that all nutrients can come from your diet. I do believe in aggressive, aggressive supplementation, uh, very aggressive supplementation. I get this, uh, this concept from Dr. Atkins, from people like Ray Kurzweil, from people like even like, uh, like Dr. Uh, Joel Furman. I think aggressive supplementation especially with the uh, vitamins and minerals and trace minerals. Joel Wallach is another one. Uh, I think that aggressive supplementation is a necessity. Uh, Bruce Ames, the founder of the triage theory of aging and disease, I think aggressive supplementation is a mandatory part of having a healthy diet that people are overlooking. I mean, like Wallach would say, like Joel Wallach would say, we supplement our livestock, we supplement our dogs and cats, we supplement these people. Why aren't we supplementing our people and our children the way we're supplementing our animals? Okay? It's because we care more about chicken, we care more about having cheap chicken, we care more about having cheap beef, we care more about having cheap pork than we do about having healthy people. And that's a problem. That's a problem that can only be dealt with 
by being more honest about supplementation, finding more out about supplementation. And I really believe the government being honest about supplementation and start recommending certain uh, supplements to the public, even perhaps manufacturing direct to consumer from the government different supplements, especially things like vitamin C, B complex, and the trace minerals and minerals. Uh, I think that, you know, it's, it's high time the government gets off its ass and starts doing something in that respect. Uh, and that's all for this video. Do look at the links in the description. Remember, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a chiropractor. I'm not a nutritionist, not a dietitian. I'm not any of that. Okay, so this video is not medical advice. It's made for entertainment purposes only. And that's all.